For Johnny Nash, seeing clearly was really about waiting for the ring to be gone. But in Visual Studio, sometimes seeing clearly requires looking at the debug view. Let's match on that. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're taking a look at debugging in Visual Studio. Uh, so Dave, what's up with that? How come you have bugs in the first place? Why are you writing perfect code? Well, you know, I try, but um, sometimes I get distracted by Slack messages from my friends and, you know, Videos I missed of keystroke Tom here. Running. Yeah, these things happen. It's also been said that all software has bugs, so I try not to feel real bad about it. Regardless, I do end up spending a significant portion of my day within the debugger in Visual Studio. And there's this, there's a couple of things that, even though I've been using this for years, I didn't know existed. And it just makes it so much easier to find what you're looking for when you're dealing with lists of data. So let's take a look at this little sample app that I'm working with. Um, this is the admin app for the two weeks ready project that I volunteer on. And what it's doing is listing out a series of hazards. So it's just a, a collection of hazards here that it's going to get. And I'll just move the breakpoint so we can just see what the app looks like. I'll get logged in. And so we have these hazard infos, which is just a list of hazards, things like earthquakes, volcanoes, and a bunch of test data that I'm working with. And um, what I want to do is just create a breakpoint. I don't actually have a bug in here. This code happens to be perfect. Uh, hey. But I do want to just show you what the debug debugger looks like here. If I refresh this and I wanted to look at this list of hazard infos that was returned from my repository, um, I just get um, these indexes, 0 to 5, because there's six of them, and then just hazard info. And if I want to find the one that I'm looking for, I have to expand each one to try to find the one that I'm looking for, or maybe it happened to be the fourth one. Whichever one it happens to be, that's kind of clumsy, right? So there's a couple of ways that we can make that experience a little better. And the one that's existed like absolutely forever is to add something to that class. So if we look at what this class is, these hazard infos, what are these things anyway? It's an enumerable of hazard info. Um, which for some reason just inherit is a nothing class that inherits from a base class. It's kind of interesting, um, but that it's just a class that has a bunch of properties on. So there is an attribute called debugger display that I can add to that class to tell the debugger how to display it. And then I just give it a string format here. Uh, with some curly braces, I believe is the intention. Uh, I should be able to get some IntelliSense on there guiding me. No, maybe not. IntelliSense is failing me. But what I can do is just say, like, I want to display the name here. And now if I run that and hit that breakpoint, um, it should display the name property inside of the visualizer for me so that I don't have to go and expand each and every item to see which one it is I'm looking at. So head over to that page again, I should hit that breakpoint. We didn't because I removed the breakpoint. All right. We'll debug this video later. <laughs> so there we go. We have that in there and we can add multiple properties to that. There's some formatting hints that you can use. Uh, I'll link to those in the show notes, the, the documentation to the debugger display attribute. Uh, it's really cool and really helpful if you happen to have access to the code base for that class. If that might not be the case, you might be using another package. You might have referenced a NuGet package and you have a list of classes that aren't classes that you own. You don't have the ability to go and change the code to add that debugger display attribute. Somewhere recently, I don't remember which version of Visual Studio it was, might've been 2019, uh, they added something really useful 
to the debugger that allows me to do that without actually having to change the code. Um, so I've reverted this back and removed the item, or removed the, dis the attribute there. And you can see that when I hit the breakpoint, it's back to just showing the class name. But if I expand this, I can actually go and there's a little pin here next to the name. I can click on that and now it displays it just the way it did previously. It says name equals. Um, so there's a way to customize that display now without having to actually modify your source code by adding attributes. And you can add multiple of these. So if there was something else that you were interested in here, here my IDs are GUIDs and I probably don't want to see them, but I could pin that as well and display both of the items in there. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also another interesting thing that I've, I knew about, but I haven't really used it a whole lot. Um, but if you're looking for something, there's also this local window here that within the debugger that shows you anything that's within the local scope of where your breakpoint was hit. You can actually search for this or search within here. So if I was trying to find the earthquake one, I could enter that in the search window and it would find it for me here. You can modify how deep within the um, within your object structures that it will go and search. But uh, lots of interesting little things, um, digging deeper into the debugging tools that can help you to get it, find the data that you're looking for a little more quickly, not having to you know, expand each and every item in a list to try to find the one you're looking for. And the nice thing about like when you start getting into some of that stuff, Dave, too, is that the the debugger stuff for the most part is non-destructive right so like you can go in here and plug around with most of these pieces and you can see there's additional tools in there for like search depth and when you have a property highlighted you can pin it and all of those things as well and all of that's totally resettable so it's it's a great way to kind of explore and know your tools better so that's awesome those are yep. some great tips and it does remember this across um runs so like if i close the solution, come back and run it again. It will remember that I had pinned these, but I can always unpin them too. Like it's it's not there permanently, but it does remember for you. So you, you don't have to go back and redo it every time. Yeah, these are some features that I used to get with Ozcode. Um, I mean, yeah. I still think their implementations may be a little bit better than the native Visual Studio one um, because it allows for like adding filters to collections. Oh yeah. Uh, but this is like 80% of the way there. Mm -hmm. Definitely very helpful. Um, oh, and that's kind of neat too. So there's a filter here on the locals toolbar that allows me to show only the properties that I've pinned. So maybe I'm not interested in, maybe it's just information overload to have everything in there. I could filter down to just the ones that I've pinned which may or may not be useful, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I could see some use in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Groovy. Awesome. Well, thanks for that, Dave. And thanks for joining us today on uh, this week's edition of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, remember to like, comment, share, and uh, ask questions down in the comments below. Or if you've got your own Visual Studio tips, uh, dump them in there and then we can maybe do some of these hidden gems as future episodes even and share them out as well. And uh, don't forget to hit that little alarm bell so that you get notifications. We got new things posted and we will see you all on the next time of the ASP.NET Monsters. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.